Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for this Wednesday Wisdom, the Jewish Museum's live object talk series. My name is Lisa. I am the Senior Learning Manager here at the Jewish Museum. And today's object is one of over 40,000 objects that we have in our collection that shows the diversity of Jewish life and history. Our programs preserve the unique and diverse voices of Jewish communities and explore connections between faiths and cultures. Our theme for the month of November is support. And this month, we will highlight objects in our collection that explore this theme. It is also important for me to mention the support that I have received for this object talk as well. So all of the research that was prepared for this talk was put together by our wonderful volunteer, Anya Duras. So thank you so much, Anya, for your support on this video. So I'm going to share my screen with you now so that you can see the object. Just bear with me one moment. Okay, so we can see this object here. And I want you to think about what your first impressions are of this object. What do you think this object might be? Well, this is one page from a diary that belonged to sister Florence Oppenheimer. Florence kept this diary during her time as a nurse on board hospital ships during the First World War. So she was on the ships from between 1915 to about 1919, so just after the war. And her diary consists of pages of handwritten accounts and original photographs that she took while on board the ships and in Cairo and Palestine. So I'm going to show you, this is a photo of Florence. Now Florence Oppenheimer was born in 1882 in Islington in London. And she spent the ages of around 17 to age 27 cooking for her eight person family. So clearly she was naturally quite a supportive individual from an early age. She also worked in the East End when there was a lot of poverty. And eventually she decided she wanted to train to become a nurse, but her father did not want her to become a nurse. And it was actually one of her brothers that convinced their father to let her train. And she was 29 years old when she started her training at the Royal Sus Sussex County Hospital in 1911. And Florence was taking her final nursing exams when the war broke out. During the war, Florence served with Queen Alexandra's Imperial Military Nursing Service Reserves. And she served on hospital ships, notably during the Gallipoli campaign and in Egypt and Palestine. She was also mentioned in dispatches on the 16th of March, 1916 for gallant and distinguished services in the field. So I'm going to share with you a couple of extracts from Florence's diary. So I'll read the accounts out loud. It's really important, I think, to preserve this important part and unique view of a historical event. So on July 28th, between July 28th and July 30th, 1915, Florence writes, I have done some odds and ends of needlework for some of the boys, sewn badges on their coats, mended seams of their tunics, and I made Filmer some pads of wool covered in muslin to put inside his coat as a protection against sunstroke. It is absolutely necessary for the spine to be protected as well as the nape of the neck. Lights out tonight at eight o'clock. So we can see already in some of her diary entries that Florence is supporting 
the soldiers by doing some needlework and some sewing. Another one of her entries, which is dated August 8th to 9th, 1915. As soon as we arrived, tea was served and the matron came along and told us to go down and start work at once. There were already a few wounded on board and they were getting them on as fast as they could. We didn't stop for our boxes to get out aprons, but instead pinned towels over our alpaca dresses, and we soon had our hands full. I got landed right in the very depths of the boat, a dreadful hole with really hardly any air. This was supposed to be for minor cases, but of course lots of serious ones got sent down as well. I cut dressings and got things in order and I would not let the medical officers start until we were quite ready. It really only makes a muddle. Then we simply slaved away at dressings until about 12 o'clock when I had got my 200 men fairly well settled in bed. On the 10th of August to the 13th of August, 1915, Florence again writes in her diary, Two doctors had been on all night, and they had been splendid. They had washed the patients and had everything in apple pie order, and they had even drawn the coffee for breakfast. I thanked them and asked them why they had bothered. Well, they said, we are not going to let you work again like you did yesterday. As soon as we anchored, a Red Cross lady arrived on the scene to see if we were in want of anything. And a couple of hours afterwards, hundreds of shirts, pajamas, and socks arrived. The matron handed them over to me to distribute, and it was a real treat. The men were just delighted with them. It had been a hard five days, but so worthwhile. If anyone had told us how we were going to work beforehand, we would have said it was impossible. What helped so much was that absolutely everybody on the ship was doing their very utmost. The shift staff, one and all, from the youngest boy up to the chef, every steward giving every moment of their spare time to help us as much as they possibly could. Florence continued to write in her diary for the duration of the war, and it ends with a really nice um, uh, kind of writing that she wrote in the end of her diary. After five years of really hard work, I was very tired and thought I would be wise to return home. However long I live, I shall always be grateful for the opportunity to do this wonderfully rewarding work and memories will be a joy to look back upon. Florence returned to London in 1919 and ended up marrying Leopold Greenberg, who was the editor of the Jewish Chronicle newspaper. She then worked on cooking related columns and wrote her cookbook, The Jewish Cookery Book, which was a staple in many Jewish households. So we can see from Florence's incredible life, these themes of support. She supported her family early in her life. She supported her crew members and the doctors and the other nurses on board. She worked tirelessly to care for the wounded soldiers, and she even returned to active service after being posted back in London. After her years of service, her work continued. Um, she was a journalist, a lecturer, a BBC broadcaster, and of course, her cookbook, The Jewish Cookery Book, was published in 1934. Florence Oppenheimer acted as a support for so many people. She was a crucial member of an outstanding team of medical staff and created this incredible cookbook that so many Jewish families used. And her life really centered around supporting and nurturing others. So that is our um, object talk for today. Thank you so much for joining me in learning more about the diary of Florence Oppenheimer and how she supported 
individuals during the First World War. And a huge thank you to Anya Duras, our volunteer, who contributed all of the research for this talk. Please do join us next week on the 11th of November at 12 noon for our next object talk. So thank you so much and see you next time.